What are your thoughts on commercial pet diets and vaccinations? Can you share the best diets out there? What are your pets eating? Thank you for spending your Saturdays, Saturdays with us. It means a lot and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, the pet industry is a giant clusterfuck. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. The pets themselves are not. They're awesome. Everyone should have pets if they can. Um, they are super wonderful and helpful in uh, getting through all sorts of madness. But um, yeah. veterinarians have become, um, uh, through no initial fault of their own, so um, so responsive to market forces, unable to make a living except by charging for all sorts of things that animals don't need. And um, and just basically being pill, pill pushers the way many MDs are now. Um, you know, our animals are fully vaccinated. Um, but, well, I don't know. I think, I think they're asking for one of them to get a flu shot, honestly. Fairfax is actually anti-vax. <laughs> he just really doesn't like shots. Um, yeah, I actually, for the first time now, I'm hearing about a flu shot for, I don't even know which, why it would be one and not all of them. Maybe it's just because it's the dog and not the cats, but, um, no, they haven't had flu shots. I don't think, but they've, they've got all of their, um, lifetime or, you know, you need a tighter every two or three years shots and they always will, um, because they do spend some time outside. Um, pet diets, man, uh, you know, we don't. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. And we, you know, we don't spend the time to, um not give them commercial food because you got to have a life. Yeah. Um, but it's a disaster and it's, it's all full of garbage and it's terrible for them. But it's not even like full of garbage the way junk food is full of garbage. Yeah. There's something um, physiologically <clears throat> dangerous in the pet food supply. And you can just see this in the number of pets who just mysteriously end up having some allergy to their food. Something is off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, your cat just developed a chicken allergy. Just developed a chicken allergy? What are you talking about? Yeah. Cat's been eating chicken for six years. Well, it's just developed a chicken just allergy. Just developed a chicken allergy, which, you know. Um, so basically what this means is stuff that's in the gut is being exposed to the immune system, which is not supposed to happen. Um, yeah. This, I believe, is analogous to what happened to me with wheat. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And so basically the question is, what is exposing stuff in the gut to the immune system? Right, that's the question, and maybe it's the same thing for the pets that's happening to people that's causing so many of us to be allergic to things that we otherwise would normally eat. Mm -hmm. um, but that's the real question, and you know, you've got some kind of dysfunction, and it's especially likely to show up in pet food because pet food is especially likely to be less well regulated than human food. Yeah, and it's going to have a lot of filler in it, and the fact is, um, especially for cats, but also for dogs. Um, like, you should expect, I don't actually know if it's true, but the prediction is that you'll have less of a problem with the diets and the foods of um, animals that are omnivores in the wild. Like if you've got a rabbit or a guinea pig or something, um, then if you've got one of these carnivorans and um, your pet food has any filler at all in it, you know, increasingly there's a lot of grain-free pet food available and it costs a little bit more, but that's almost certainly worth doing. But even the non-grain-free stuff, has stuff in it that at least your cats wouldn't be eating in the wild. You know, cats don't eat sweet potatoes in the wild. Yeah. Sorry, they don't. So um, it's, you know, is it bad for them inherently? Not necessarily, but is it the sweet potato that in one of one in 50 cats uh, creates a leaky gut syndrome? Yeah. Maybe. You know, probably not for dogs. Dogs are more omnivorous yeah. and um, they do more sharing of, um, of food as well um, in their wild state, and so probably also have a more robust sort of you know gut biota, um, also. So, oh boy, it's a it's a disaster. Yep. yep, could be could be the fillers, could be the pesticides on the crops, could be other stuff in our environment, could be off gassing furniture that causes a physiological reaction that uh, you know inflammation that causes the immune system to see stuff. It, it, we you know. Yep. Uh, we'd be wise to figure out how to wield uh, precaution mm -hmm. more effectively because we are suffering from its failure. Yeah. I mean, I guess one, one thing we do do is um, when we cook, for instance, a whole bird, like a, a turkey or a chicken, um, we tend to not spend a ton of time getting absolutely all the meat off the bones. We will make the carcass into stock 
And then we will take that carcass after we've pulled off all the rest of the resource for us to use for soup or for the base of whatever we're going to use, you know, freezing stock. Um, and then we will take all the rest of the remaining meat and give it to the animals, um, such that there's a, essentially no waste. And it's great for them. It's real food. It's honest. It's actual meat. And it doesn't have anything else in it. Yeah. But don't yeah. give them the bones after you've cooked them. Right. I, I don't know how good advice that is. We've certainly been given that advice, but mm -hmm. I don't think it's safe. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how dangerous it is, but um, it's not the same as uh, the raw bones. Yeah.